Hello there, my name is Bruce from Brankus Creations and welcome to today's live stream. I apologize for being a little bit late. It has to do with this, me eating some lunch. Um, just cut the timing out by about three minutes. I probably should have started the live stream at about like 12.35. Would have just given me enough time to uh, fit this last little bit of hamburger into my gob. Um, so, a quick little hello to folks. Um, excuse me while I mute, while I do a great big burp. Uh, hello to Frank S. Hello to Retro Techie. Hello to Jay from the House of Moth. Jack 68K. Enzo Fitzhume. Steve from Mac 84. Uh, Garth Beagle. Uh, and another Bruce. Look at that. G'day, Bruce. Um, that looks like an American Bruce. Uh, what else? Uh, Patrick Pitts. Mystery Margo. Uh, Sad Mac 356. Max 1 um, And I think that's everyone. So, yeah, so essentially. Uh, I didn't fix this one. <laughs> yes. Well, okay, let me tell you what happened. So um, I will probably mention this story a couple of times because people, uh, when they're doing the live streams, don't all necessarily turn up right at the beginning. So we get, might get some people turning up a little bit later on. But basically, um, uh, this, uh, this board was battery damaged. And the, the story behind it is that... Um, Joe had a go at fixing it. Then he sent it to Steve. Steve had a go at fixing it. Then Steve sent it to me. And it, it sat here for ages, and, and that's, I, I, I apologize for that, that's, you know, that's my fault. But anyhow, I managed to get it working uh, through, you know, and there is a video on it. If you actually have a look at my featured, I think featured videos, there's one. It's not actually a live video, it's more of a summary of what ended up going on. And I got it all working, and that was great, and, you know, it's all good. And then Joe was like, hey, Bruce, any chance of you sending that board back again? So I said, yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Um, all that remains is for me to give it a clean, paint a bit of UV solder mask on it, you know, and then we're good to go. So sure enough, ultrasonically cleaned, painted a little bit of solder mask on it, tried it, ba -bow, back to the old SEMA CMAX screen. So that was an extremely disappointing thing, uh, but not, not overly surprising. It's very common, excuse me, very common to end up with these sorts of problems after ultrasonic cleaning because sometimes, in particular when you've got things that are corroded, sometimes there are, um, what do you call it, wires making contact just by a little thread of corroded metal. And then you drop it in the ultrasonic cleaner, it cleans it away, and then you lose that contact. And you might think, well, okay, well, don't ultrasonically clean it, but you have to because it, that thing that is just being held on with a thread, it's going to fail may as well fail now then take the computer home plug it in put it away bring it out a, a, a month or two months later and it not work so it makes a lot more sense to me to actually find these problems and deal with them now <clears throat> than uh, have a problem that uh, lasts you know that is going to last uh, you'd be sitting there as a little what do you call it thing waiting to happen so it's stayed here. It hasn't gone anywhere. Uh, it has basically just died at my hand, so we can't blame Javier for anything. Um, but um, but we will be having a look at it today and see if we can sort it. So see if we can sort it out. I, I thought I might might also jump back and have a look at the LC575 I was looking at last time that was giving me the sad Mac chime. I figured what we might do is uh, swap a couple more RAM chips on it and see if we can get that to fire up too. Load bearing dirt. Yep, that's what it is. Uh, what I'm going to do very, very quickly, I'm going to put the last of this in my mouth. So just hang on a second. Yes, interesting you say that, Jack 68K. Those, um, that is a very common problem uh, with the little legs underneath the chips there, those PLCC chips. I've also had little cracks on those legs sometimes. That's one of the reasons why you need to do a lot of close inspection when you're working on these things. So, uh, um, yeah, so I, I, I found out a couple of things today. I, find out how far, I found out how fast I can eat a quarter pounder. Um, <clears throat> now... A couple of things I want to mention, uh, important mention is, uh, I have these. These are a new pair of spectacles that I had made up specifically for my work here in the workshop. 
they have they are bifocals as you can probably see the little magnification bit at the bottom uh, the magnification around the outside is designed specifically for me me to be able to read this computer screen that's what i look like without glasses on um, so i can see the computer screen nice and clearly it's north um, but in here the little magnification bits they're like three and a half times so there's some pretty serious magnification on there not good for trying to type on a keyboard but very good if i'm trying to read little codes on things and stuff like that so today is the first test to see how they're going to work we'll see how are the bifocals with the microscope they're not too bad i i would have in a perfect world preferred the magnification bit to be a little bit lower but i can still quite happily look through here look through the microscope and have good vision through this top part. So essentially at this stage, looking good. Today is the first proper test, first live stream, first work I'm gonna be doing. I am looking forward to being able to see stuff small. So I can read, I can even read the, the amount of move that I've had. I don't know if anyone else has trouble reading the move, the red type on the black with the Apple Watch. Uh, so that's number one, got these glasses. They're not perfect, because ideally I would like to be looking at the screen like that. And I sort of have to look at it like that, or I can pull them down my nose like this. Oh. Um, so, Max Button is here. Hello there. Um, now, another really important thing that I need to mention. Uh, oh, actually, I should mention a couple of things. First of all, there has been a new episode of um, Startup Disc is Full. So, if you're not a subscriber, please jump onto the channel. I'll ask Jay at some stage to put a link in there to the uh, YouTube channel. Uh, this is the little side project that I've been doing with Jay and with Dana, and it's been a lot of fun. Uh, the e previous episode we did on 3D printing, and that was a very, very intense two and a half hour episode with lots and lots and lots and lots of information. Uh, this time we took it back a little bit and made it a little bit light, uh, a little bit fun, and we just did an episode on gadgets. And so uh, we had a lot of fun recording it. So uh, the non-Steve episode, yeah, I... I I have already apologized to Steve for this because I did something a little bit rude. I asked him if he would like to be on the guest spot on uh, an episode of uh, Startup Disc is Full that we were doing on gadgets. And he said, yes, yes I'd love to. And I'm very happy to have him on the show. Um, some, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> so we just went ahead and recorded the thing. And like, Steve's like, isn't this the one I was going to be on? I was like, yeah, 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 it is the one that you were meant to be on. So, um, uh, the struggle to find a gadget, yes indeed. We had a lot of fun with that as well. <laughs> uh, in particular, Jay's struggle with the concept of what a, uh, a gadget is. But yeah, anyway, we got through it, so that was all fun. Um, so anyhow, I, um, I am going to have to, I'm gonna have to get this link myself because Jay's off doing who knows what. Uh, I mean, gosh. Um, constantly nagging me to do live streams and then disappears just when I need him. Um, Mike, I believe, is still streaming. My apologies for that. Um, that we're overlapping. I mean, I had always planned to stream at this time today. Um, and he has been streaming for a very long time. So, you know, it happens. Bound to get overlaps. Yeah. The reason why we call the show Startup Disc is full, it's meant to be symbolic of our heads, full of useless information. Um, and, and we had enough silliness in this one that we were actually able to... Um, we were able to have a little outtake section, which we do like to have as well. All right, so, I'm just going to drop this into the chat there. You guys... Do with it what you will. Uh, don't watch it now, for goodness sake. Um, but later on, if you get a chance to have a look at that episode, and uh, please um, do us a, a subscribey. We do like that. Have I ever used solder paste? Yes, I have, Bruce. I have used solder paste, and I use it for specific things. So if I'm doing something like um, BGA rework, uh, which BGA is ball grid array, so a particular type of chip where they have little balls of solder underneath, I use solder paste when I'm reballing a BGA chip. So they are a necessary part of that. Um, that's certainly how I like to do it anyway. There are some people that I know do it differently, but I use solder paste for that. 
Uh, in terms of using solar paste for just soldering surface mount components, not a big fan of it. It just it's just not for me. It's I, I like soldering the way I solder. That is a different method of soldering. Hello, Dave, and hello, Frank. Is it Frank the third? Is it Frank three? Um, not sure. Joshua Block. Hello. Um, and so just looking at these people turning up. Okay. Um, so. Uh, yeah, so solder paste, just not really my thing. I, when I did um, the Macintosh Classic Reloaded project, helped out uh, Kai with that, you know, finding problems and whatnot and, and stuff. So when I built a classic logic board using the thingy, uh, he gave me a stencil with it. So I could, I had the option if I wanted to do the soldering with a stencil. So you put the stencil down, you put your solder paste on, you give it a good old wipe, you take the stencil off, and then you drop all the components on, and then you heat it. Now, ideally you heat it in an oven, because if you use a hot air station, you have the potential of blowing those components off, but you put it in an oven, that solder paste melts, sucks the components into a nice tidy position using the surface tension of the solder, and you're good to go in theory. And I did a little bit of mucking around with that in that video, and I, I didn't really like working with solar paste, but each to their own. For some people, it's how they like to work, and that's all good. Um, Marchintosh exists because Ma Macintosh could well be. Um, uh, yeah, I will a quick little shout out to Marchintosh. I don't know. I should. I didn't even put the hashtag on this video. Oh, it's not March yet, is it? No. So. Pfft. No need. Um, so, Marchintosh, yes, um, you know, that's coming up. Uh, I will uh, probably release a couple of Marchintosh videos. I, I, I will confess that I'm not. It's, it's Marchintosh all year round for me. So, you know. Um, where would, I saw your question in one of the groups. Where would be the best place to get RAM from Macintosh Plus? Um, and I know the, Mac, the RAM you're talking about. I mean, you will, you probably can... No, nah, I won't say that. I won't say that. Um, the I actually had a situation once where I went on eBay and I went to a seller and I said, and they had these one megabyte SIMs and they were photos of the ones with eight chips. So I ordered them and when they arrived, they were ones with two chips. And I contacted them and I said, look, you had a picture of the ones with eight chips and then you sent me ones with two chips, and these are no good to me in these really old Macs, like the Macintosh 2 and stuff like that. Um, and they basically came back and said, look, sorry, we will refund you if you want, but it's like, I'll, I'll hang on to them because I've got plenty of Macs to put them in. Um, but they did then send me a link to say, these ones that we sell are definitely the eight chip ones if you want to buy them. They weren't super cheap, but they were there. Now, I will see if I can find that. It was a while ago, so I can't guarantee that they're still selling it. But that was one where they were actually saying, this is what you will get. You will get a sim like this. Um, so uh, that's the best I can offer at the moment. I mean, if I was going to be doing it, I'd be just searching on the eBay. Um, but it's a bit, you yeah. know. Um, memory masters on eBay, they may have some, yeah. Memory masters are generally the way to go. I think they're reproducing them, aren't they? I think they're new. I don't think they're actually, I don't think they've got old stock. I think this is new stuff with, you know, like the old, uh, hey, got my stuff from K Koba, Kero's Mac Mods. Love that stuff. And I've got my little SC ROM sim, I think, here somewhere too. It's purple. So I shouldn't, I shouldn't have any trouble finding it because it's purple. Unless I took it back up into the house, that's always possible. Ah, here it is. So we might even be able to try this today. So this is an SE30 ROM. And I actually bought the other day a, pro, a ROM programmer. So if I decide that I want to go in and make changes to these, I can. So, And that's, that ROM programmer it can also be used to program uh, ROM chips for the Classic, Classic 2, Color Classic, that sort of thing. So I'm going to... Have a little bit of a dabble with that so i've got to just got to find out what are the right chips i should be using steve already sent me all that information a while ago but yeah it's in the ether somewhere um so uh another really interesting thing that i would mention what's interesting to me probably boring as batshit to everyone else but um i got a new mac on friday um i ordered it from apple on uh, last saturday so eight days ago uh, 
and I jumped onto their website. It was a custom order, so I had to actually do it online. You can't go into the store. Um, and I got a Mac Mini 2023 model, uh, the one with the M2 Pro, I think, is that what they call it? Uh, and it's a 12 core CPU and a 19 core GPU. Um, four Thunderbolt ports, two USB A, you know, 3.1 ports, an HDMI port, an Ethernet port, a headphone socket, and power socket. Um, so lots of I.O. And I have got that all set up and I'm just in the process of migrating, migrating everything across. It is replacing a Mac Pro 5.1, which is also a 12 core machine, but a much bigger and older one. And so I've been busily copying software across and updating things and all that sort of stuff. So that's going really well. Uh, I'm really looking forward to using this for proper production. Uh, there are some things that it does blazingly fast. I still find the Adobe Creative Suite not as fast as it could be, but that is not the fault of the computer. That is because the Adobe Creative Suite is a bunch of shitty bloat. Um, they, Adobe have moved to a subscription model, so they are under pressure now to just continue releasing updates, and they just keep adding stuff to it, and it is now just bloaty shit. So, um, what size M2? I think, did I say that? Yeah. Well, yeah, so 12 core. So uh, the base model of the Mini uh, is a 10 core, uh, and then you can um, do a custom order. So I got it with, uh, I got the top model with all the, the, the M2 Pro, which has all the extra uh, ports on it, lots of I.O. Uh, I got it with 32 gigs of RAM. I got it with the 12 core CPU, and I got it with two terabyte internal SSD. So, very, very happy with it so far. Uh, it's still, I'm still going through a process of kind of normalizing everything. I mean, for instance, it's indexing my email. Now, not everyone does this, but I do. I have every email that I ever sent or received since 1992. Uh, so, it's a big mail library. And indexing that is taking an extremely long time. So, we're just still waiting and waiting. But... Hopefully it will be finished soon. It, it works in reverse chrono chronological order. So it indexes new stuff and then it works its way down to the old stuff. So I'm in a situation at the moment where if I go in to search my mail, I can search stuff back to about 2017 or something. But I'm still waiting for it to go further back. Uh, Rudy is here. Hello, Rudy. I haven't uh, seen or chatted to you in ages. Hello, Rudy. Welcome. Um, now... Um is, oh, Charlie's here. Hello, Charlie. How's it going? Um, right, so, I had a very interesting situation the other day. Sorry, I'm chatting a lot here, and I'll, I'll wrap it up soon and then start getting some work done. But uh, I had an interesting situation where I had someone contact me um, to see if I would do some restoration work on some Macs for them to then resell them to make a decent amount of coin from them. <coughs> and basically he told me that he had two SE30s, uh, a Centra 650, all with keyboard and mouse, and some hard drives and a tape drive and some printers. And I said, well, look, you know, printers, okay. Well, if you've got uh, an original personal laser writer by Apple, or if you've got a laser writer 2NT or a 2NTX, you're going to be able to resell them for a decent amount of money. It's not something that I can necessarily restore, but even if, you know, if they don't work, I would say that you'd still probably be able to fetch some money for them. But... If they are anything else, chances are they're just going to be um, rubbish. Because in this day and age, if you want a printer, unless it has some sort of nostalgic value, and they actually turned out to be uh, inkjet printers, big inkjet, inkjet printers. I think they're like A3 inkjet printers, two of them. And they are mustard yellow, are not meant to be. And um, does new mini run with the ARM processor? Yes, it does. So, um, apple silicon, as they say. So, um, uh, so anyhow, I basically said to him, look, mate, the printers, after seeing a picture of them, the printers are worth nothing. So leave them out of your equations about trying to make some money from this project. Then he sent me photos of everything else yesterday, and I had a look at them, and I was like, oh, dear. Uh, first of all, there aren't two SE30s. 
There's an SE30 and an SE800K, 800K 20 megabyte hard drive. So it's a relatively early, early model SE. It's not even the FDHD. Uh, there's the Quadra. There is a Centra 650 there. It's there. Uh, everything is yellowed like you would not believe. It has dirt on it. Um, the keyboard for the SE is cracked. Um, and I basically came back to him and I said, look, you okay in this country in australia se30 sold is not working you're probably going to get three to four hundred dollars for it because the se30 is very desirable and people taking risks on them even with ones that are being sold as you know not working uh, you could e you can easily spend three to four hundred dollars for them in this country uh, once they're fixed and restored with keyboard and mouse you're probably looking at you might get 800 um, you might get a little bit more if you get the right buyer, but as we know, when it comes to selling things at auction, you've got to have the right buyer there. Um, JJ Brubecker, hello there. Um, and so, uh, you know, I, and I said, look, with the SE, no point spending any money restoring that. You're looking at probably two to $300 the way it is at the moment. It probably still works because SE, sorry, SE. Did I say SE30? I meant just SE, the original Mac SE 800K. I said that, you know, two to $300 here in the Australian market, it's probably working. But if you want to spend money on restoring it, you're not going to recoup it. You're not going to double the sale price or something by investing time in it. So I'm saying, forget about doing any resto work on that. Just sell it as is. Um, and then the Centra 650, again, I mean, this thing is absolutely yellowed like you wouldn't believe. I mean, these, these computers don't look good. They look bad. So if you're going to be selling them without retro brighting them, um, I think you'd have a bit of a hard time trying to make them look nice. I mean, you might, with a bit of a clean, get them to a reasonable state. But again, Centra 650 over here, two dollars $300, something like that. Don't see much point in investing much time in any restoration work on a computer that's going to fetch that sort of money. So, you know, so I went back to him. I said, look, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, because he, he's acting on behalf of someone else. And I think that someone else thought he was sitting on a gold mine. And I'm like, I hate to burst your bubble here, but, you know, your SE30, yes, you could spend a bit of money on that and you might be able to make a bit of money from it. But, you know, other stuff like, you know, you spent, you pay me to do a, a restoration job on it. You'd be lucky to recoup those costs when you sell them. Um, 2GS and a 2GS was. I am not the person who asked John. Hello, John. Uh, you might need to check with someone else. So, um, num, 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 num. Show us pictures. I didn't bring them down here. Uh, oh, actually, they're on my Dropbox, so I'm, they might be here. Let's have a look, say. Uh, what have I done? Oh, there we are. Sorry, but this computer, ever since I updated uh, this eCam software, this computer does definitely struggle. There's Dropbox, there's Dropbox. You see how jerky it's going now? That's just me, that's just me moving around in the finder. B, uh, you see. Oh, piffle. Actually, you know what? I can get it from, on the interwebs from there we go let's close that who would have known that opening a, a window in the finder was going to make my stream come to a grinding halt <laughs> i think i'm going to have to get a new computer the the old version of the ecam software didn't really have this sort of problem but they've obviously added stuff to it and it is now making this computer labor quite a bit if i have a, a safari window open in the background um recents here we go that's not recent. No. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I asked to dismiss. I asked to have it added to my... No. I, I, I suspect I may reach a point very soon where I tire of this and say, no, it's not happening. Photos. Come on. Connecting to server. It's struggling a bit. It's definitely struggling a bit. No, no. Well, for whatever reason, then it's not here. I thought I added these photos to my Dropbox, but they clearly didn't add properly. So, sorry. Uh, no photos. Uh, but anyhow, 
that's kind of where we are at the moment. Uh, that's the, um, so new Mac, new glasses. Um, I think that's it. Let's see if I can get some normality back in my live stream again. See, there are 2GS people that know this. I, I like the 2GS um, in that, um, you know, I, I, when I was younger, I used to see the 2GS and go, oh, I want one of those, but they were totally with it outside of my price range. Um, they've become a bit expensive these days. Um, but I would definitely like to have one in the collection. I have spoken to someone who has a bunch of them and they don't like them very much. So they just said, yeah, you can have one of mine. <laughs> I'm like, thank you. Um, <coughs> all right. So let's see if we can get some work done here. Um, the first thing I thought I might do just before we get onto the, uh, the, um, uh, SE30, and this is just for trying to get things finished more than anything. Um, this is the LC575 I was working on the other day, and this is one getting a sad Mac chime. Uh, and got some nice gunk on it there. Uh, I am planning to replace these RAM chips with other ones, and I'm going to start replacing them two at a time now, and then we'll just see if we can get this to chime, and then we can at least consider this one, another one done. So. There's my top view here. So this is it here. You can see that's the RAM I've replaced so far. It did not make a difference. Uh, I've got another seven to go. I'm not gonna do them one at a time. I'm gonna do them two at a time and then test. And then hopefully we will get it sorted. Um, in, I'm not sure if I said to, hello to you, um, but I'm gonna say it now, but I'm not going to attempt to pronounce your name there because it's like, I N X Q U V E, Incuve, Incuve. Sorry, I did try to pronounce it and I failed. All right, let's start whipping some of these uh, RAM chips off. So this will be interesting to see. I'm using my new glasses. Fancy. Oh, look at that. I better put some heat shield here so I don't melt stuff. This is the good board. So I'm going to whip off two of these chips. Just using the good old hot air station. Um, I'll, I'll do the putting them on in, under the microscope, but the taking them off part, well, happy to do without the microscope. This one we uh, recapped. It hadn't been recapped and we recapped it. And of course the hope when you recap something is that's gonna fix everything, but it's not always the case. And in this instance, it certainly was not the case. So we've taken those two off. Now let's grab some another two replacements from here. Uh, 2C2E, Platinum, 2GS, 2GS was, and a lot of documentation software. That's that's awesome, John. Uh, this is yours, Max. Yes, this in, is indeed yours. Uh, Francois, you missed everything, everything. Uh, no, you didn't miss much. You basically listened to me talk about my new glasses, my new Mac, and something else and complaining about how slow this computer is. I'm just going to quit out of Safari here because it's it's making things crawl. Safari. Goodbye. Uh, ever since I updated to the latest version of Ecamm, it's really laboring this little Mac. I mean, I, it's, I, I'm putting it through its paces. I've got four USB cameras connected to it. Um, and you know, it's, it's not even running an operating system. Yeah. I mean, this Ecamm live is using 382% CPU by gum. All right. So let's take some, these are the good ones. We want to take these off. I mean, yeah, good is a relative term. I am going to work on an SE30. I promise. I promise, the only reason I'm actually doing this now is because it's part way through. I finished a live stream the other day, and I may not even finish this. If I start changing these chips and they and it doesn't fix it, I'm going to be, I'll get bored very quickly. And then I'll go back to the SE30. Now, one of the downsides with the SE30, let's just take all these off, shall we? No, actually, no, we won't, because I may not need them all. They're easier to leave them on the board. 
Um, one of the downsides uh, with this SE30 is it's not all the fun stuff where I go around whipping off, you know, um, capacitors or chips or whatever. It's the dull stuff where I have to sit there with a multimeter. Um, but that's just how it goes. That's how it is with the diagnostics. I, I generally try as much as possible to make these um, streams as interesting as possible. Um, but sometimes the work that I have to do to get something repaired is not very interesting. And there's nothing I can do about that. Um, I was chatting to my good friend Steve yesterday about some work he was doing. And he was having to remove something from a, uh, from a PCB, something, a through hole thing. And it took hours. And it has to be done. It's part of the repair, but it's not particularly interesting to watch, you know. I mean, it's like, um, Oh, look at this. Javier. Welcome, sir. Someone, someone, you, your ears must have been burning. Um, I was just explaining uh, before that um, the, uh, yes, you can mention this. Oh, I'm not going to mention the thing. I won't, I won't, I want the whole thing to be a secret. I have to, I can't reveal too much about the work that Steve was doing the other day. Um, yesterday because it is part of uh, something which has he has to keep secret about it we have to keep this is one of the things that they don't tell you when you start doing YouTube stuff sometimes we have to keep secrets um, I've had to do it a few times actually you know where you're doing stuff and it's like yeah you can't tell anyone it's like a oh, bummer I don't really wanted to tell people um, so, yeah, anyhow, uh, Javier, we're not working on it just yet because we have to wait for you to turn up. But we're about to start soon on your SE30, and it's going to be all about um, trying to figure out why it worked before and doesn't anymore. Now, I've got, there are really two possibilities. One is more likely than the other. Now, possibility number one is that the, um, yeah, I am struggling a little bit with the multifocals here. I'm gonna. Have, this is gonna take some getting used to on bifocals. I've got a place. I keep wanting to put my glasses here. I've got to put my glasses there. I've got a zig when I zag. Um, yeah. I wonder if I could take these to them and say, move it down. Maybe. Um, yeah. So there are two possibilities um, for why it's not working. And possibility number one is that that's the one I just worked on. You idiot. No, well, this one doesn't look too bad. Um, is that when it got ultrasonically cleaned, a little bit of metal that was just m bridging a gap uh, got washed away, and so that we end up with something not making contact anymore on one of the uh, dress lines. Uh, the other option is that when I did all those wire repairs, that maybe one of those wires, uh, maybe the coating came off it, and we might have created a short where two wires are overlapping. That's a less likely possibility, but I won't rule it out. GT, how you doing? GT just released a new video today. Anyone who's interested in the old Mac Pro 5.1s, I would recommend checking it out. He uh, did a little piece on the, uh, the CPUs, the little Xeons of CPUs inside the 5.1s, so comparing some. Okay, I'm going to plonk that there, plonk that there, so there we go, we've got, we're replacing motor rollers with NEC. Oh, Justin is here, hello there, Justin. Computer booter, computer booter, I like the name, hello there. Uh... <laughs> Find a longer name to make it easier on us tagging you. Uh, yeah. So Mike from Mike's Mac Shack, Mac Shack, he's thinking about changing the name of his channel because of um, he doesn't do that much Mac stuff anymore. Or he does. He certainly does a lot less than he used to. 
He's primarily doing Windows stuff nowadays, or PC stuff, or, you know, even just like really weird stuff. Um, so we, we, uh, we all need to try and come up with a name um, for Mike, for Mike's, you know, new channel name. I was thinking Mike's Mysterios, how about that? I mean, I thought initially Mike's Cat Shack, but I don't think he likes that one. Oh, yep, there's the link to the video. Uh, restore my LC2 logic board and put it into my LC2 case and then move the LC2 logic board that I installed an FPU socket on uh, into my LC case. Now, there is a slight issue with that, and that's the whole fan thing. Does it... On the LC versus the LC2, the LC has little metal tabs that sit on these little metal things to, for the fan and the speaker, whereas they're actually little cables, the little plugs on the LC2. So you might struggle a bit with that, or at least you might have to use different innards or muck around with some wires or something. But I'm sure you've got it all figured out, Justin don't need me blathering on about that stuff. I have an LC3 logic board with no case. I haven't recapped it yet. It needs to be recapped. But, yeah, I just thought... You know, I got I got given it by someone. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. Well, as far as I know, there's nothing wrong with it. So, I have to figure out what I can do with a caseless... Uh, LC3 logic board. Put it in some other case or something. Okay. All right, we've got these in position now. Now I've just got to do some good old drag soldering to get them properly secure. I think I could use a little bit more flux here. I'm getting a little bit of bridging going on. That's better. Oh, that's love the way solder behaves when it's got uh, a nice lot of flux around it. There's a bridge there. It's a bridge in there. There's chair as well. Uh, a super chat from Ron. Hello there, Ron. I did actually mention March and Tosh just a moment ago. Uh, just a reminder of every... I was saying to people that it's March and Tosh all year round for me. Um, but uh, March and Tosh coming up very soon. So, you know, for people who want to either watch or create a bit of, you know, Macintosh content, you know, check out the old uh, hashtag March and Tosh. It's... Uh, it's a happening thing, and not many days now. It will be March here before it's March there. So I'll get to try it out before you. I'll let you know how it's shaping up. Okay. What? That was a bridge there. I must have done that. I must have managed to do that. I think. Did I end up soldering a chip that I shouldn't have been soldering? Probably. The only C ones I should be doing, not the, the Motorola ones. All right, let's have a look at this from the side because I'm really struggling here. Uh, the LC2 Logic boards usually have the pads for the, the pogo pin fan and speakers. That is the case for the Logic board that is... Oh, that's excellent. So all your, you don't even need to... You can just ignore the little switches. That's easy. I mean, so not switches, the little plugs. The little jumpers. That's it. Lousy soldering job there. Okay, no bridges. No bridges. So we've got three replaced chips now. One, two, three. Ah, 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 
Uh, now let's give it a try. Um, as I say, I may just lose interest with this really quickly and go straight back to the uh, go back to the SE30. But mm, mm. Eh. Uh, oops. Uh, eh. This is the color classic that I keep between my legs. Best place for it. Now, what if I do side view and get to see how messy it is? Look at this mess. Look at it. Um, this is all part of sort of the one job. I did ultrasonically again. My last video, I had the ugliest looking uh, uh, LC575 board. Basically said no, not going not gonna to repair that. But uh, anyhow, I put it in the ultrasonic cleaner. So I might show that to you guys a little later so you can see how it came up after ultrasonicking. Um, I get a lot of people talking to me about ultrasonicking, and I've also seen quite a bit of misinformation being circulated. I've, I had a situation where there was someone, um, someone had posted a picture of something that had been ultrasonically cleaned, and then all these people were like, nah, that hasn't been ultrasonically cleaned, it's not clean enough. And I thought, yeah, how do you know? I mean, you know, it's like ultrasonic cleaners aren't like sticking things in a, you know, sandblaster or something like that. I mean, when you got really caked on corrosion, it's not going to get rid of it. But anyway, that's just me. That's just me having a whinge. Okay, so what we expect from this is for it to chime and then sad Mac chime. Um, we hope that it doesn't, but that's what we're expecting. So, And so I'm going to power it on. Oh, it is powered on. Yep, okay. It's oh, hang on. Yeah, we're all good. Sorry, I just freaked out there for a minute. But we're powered on. Now I'm just going to try and press this button. I didn't get any sound, but that doesn't actually, um, I've been, uh, there was some reason I didn't get sound on something the other day. I don't know. But we're not getting any screen at this stage, so, oh, where are we? We're getting white screen. We've seen white screen before, even though it's not very white. And this seems to be different behavior, but I'm not, there could be a lot of reasons for that. I'm just going to try something very quickly here. So. Okay, that's better. Yeah, okay. Sad Mac chime. I think there was a grounding issue with that last startup, so. Uh, remove those darn batteries. Where? 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 So, um... So yeah, we're still getting a sad Mac chime. I'm gonna do two more chips, just two. And if it doesn't work, uh, we're gonna move on to the SE30. We're in for the long haul here, guys, aren't we? Yeah? Yeah. That's what I like to hear. Uh, ooh. I don't know what's going on with the uh, the old eight uh, the eight forty the old Nemesis the Mac eighty four Nemesis. Very very disappointed that we haven't uh, seen any movement on that in a while. I know Steve's going to be using some sort of excuse like I've been busy. <sighs> what are we supposed to do, huh? And I'm. A Patreon as well, so I expect special service. A dreamy sound. So I'm taking a couple of chips off the other end, just because why not? Okay, so that's those ones. So far, I don't think there's anything wrong with any of these. And of course, it may not even be the RAM sims. It could be something else, like a mux chip or something um i have to have a look at the schematic if they're replacing the ram chips doesn't work uh the schematic will be next and we'll see if there's another chip associated with the ram that we might need to look into um so you have you well no uh yes yes now admittedly this is i've only taken three boards out of the box so far max so one of them is the one that is like a battery damaged nightmare. And that, that's in the heater. 
in the oven. So that's this one. Um, and this one is just, I don't really see it as repairable. I'm going to clean it up in the ultrasonic cleaner for sure. Uh, and it's all the, um, it's all the traces either going to the CPU or going to the RAM. Uh, if, yeah, it might be repairable. I don't know. A lot of work though. That's the problem. It's the amount of work that's involved. Some damage on the other side as well. Ugh. That's what I face. I have spent the last couple of days doing nothing but getting my new Mac Mini ready for production because I start I'm back to work tomorrow and uh, I need that computer to be to be working. I was very impressed with the delivery time it took for the computer when I originally ordered it. They said it was going to take, um, it was going to be ready early March. And then I got a notification from them saying it would be here on Monday, as in tomorrow. And then I got a notification on Friday morning saying it was coming today, as in on Friday. So it was a pretty good, pretty good to set an expectation at a certain spot and then actually have the reality being better than the expectation and i think that's a good that's a good ploy it's a good practice from apple <laughs> excuse me oh rudy's off see you rudy uh, uh, oh wow there's a nice little micro sd down here let's pick him up so i don't roll my chair over it oops i lost it yep i lost it Okay, okay, I'll have to find it another time and hopefully I don't roll my chair over it. Um, so, one of your LC57, so you, I've looked at three of your boards. One of them is working perfectly. One of them is, I consider unrepairable, or certainly not worth repairing. Uh, and then there's this one here, which we're very close you know, I mean, the Mac is ultimately telling us what's wrong. He's saying, I, it's failed a RAM check. I just tried to do a RAM check and it failed. So, you know, when a computer's telling you that stuff, it does make life a little bit easier. You can sort of say, well, maybe it's the RAM. Anyone here watched Narcos? The TV series Narcos, it's a few years old now. Probably five years old or something like that. Anyone? 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 Bueller? Um, I've started watching it. I started series two the other night. Finished series one the other night as well. And I have got to say, I am pretty darn impressed with it. Pretty good series. I got a question for you. Did you smash that like button? Oops, up, 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 up. Oops, that's why it's out of focus because I put one board on top of the other. <laughs> what kind of idiot does that? This kind. Didn't last past three episodes, huh, how about that? I found it to be excellent, really, really engaging viewing, very riveting. I do see eye to eye with Jay on some things, but there are other times where he's like, nah, hated it, and I'm like, I loved it, and vice versa. He's sort of like, oh, I love this movie, and I watch it, and I go, that's garbage, Jay, what are you talking about? This chip is hot, it's burning my fingers. Uh, this is a little clampy thing that I used specifically for doing um, uh, BGA rework. 
Um, but it's very handy for other things too. It's you know obviously heat resistant, and it's got very fine adjustments that you can make on it. And it's really good for doing this sort of stuff, like when I'm wanting to get solder off these pins, and I don't want the pin this chip moving around all over the place. I can just lock it into this little little clamp. And the funniest thing ended up happening when I bought this. I just jumped onto AliExpress, I think, and I just you know grabbed it. And then a little later on. Jay was like, oh, I want one like that as well. And I'm like, yeah, sweet, I'll just send you the link. Could not find this one anywhere. You could get ones that looked almost the same, but there was one massive difference, and that is this. I'm going to show you. So this little square shape is meant to hold the corners of a chip. So if you have a, if you put a square chip in there, it, they get held in this, in this little area here. Now, when I close this up, as you can see, this will do a pretty small little chip. Um, but the ones that were available when I was trying to find this one later on, they didn't do a chip this small. They did a much, much bigger one. These, these little cornery bits didn't get as close together. And so I'm sort of like, well, this is the one you want. Um, but I couldn't find, I find it anywhere. So, and I've since had people say, hey, where'd you get there? And I'm like, well, I got it on AliExpress, but I cannot guarantee you'll be able to get the same thing anymore. Mm, 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 mm. And for obvious reasons, they had killed people I knew. Yes, well, I can understand that, but I don't believe the show glorifies it at all. Um, I actually, I've sort of, it shows that he was glorified by his, by some of his people. Um, in terms of, um, you know, sort of, because he was obviously, he was an economy in, his, in himself at a certain time because he had so much money that it was pulling in from the US. So he, you know, people, so he was actually giving money away and stuff like that. And so, I, you know, in that regard, but he's, he's certainly not a glorified individual in the TV series. Um, they make him out to be um, an absolute grub, to be honest. He's like the worst of the worst. Um, do, do, do. and of course it was an amazing time in history as well in terms of the stuff that was going on in particular with things like the uh, with Noriega and the uh, Iran Contra affair and stuff like that very interesting period in history not a good one but it's certainly an interesting one I do find that sort of stuff fascinating um with our old buddy Reagan and Nancy Reagan telling us, just say no, just say no. Joe Williams, hello there. The Wire is pretty great. You know, it's funny, I started watching The Wire and I kind of lost interest in it. I mean, I probably need to give it another try. Um, I was just, I was watching and I was just, it just wasn't drawing me in. It's, this happens sometimes when I'm looking for a new series. Let's just say, for example, I've finished a series. I've got to the end of a series and I'm like, I want to watch something new. And you go to find something new and you start watching it and it's completely different to what you were watching before and you sort of, you sort of, it, it, I'll give you an example. Let's just imagine you get to the end of Game of Thrones. Now, admittedly, apart from hating Series 8, you get to the end of Game of Thrones, you're like, okay, that's over. I'm no more Game of Thrones. You want to watch something new. And then you go and watch something which is so far removed from that that, you know, it's a, I don't know, a, yeah, something completely different from Game of Thrones. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to get into it because you're in that kind of that headspace of that sort of show. And I think that's what happened with The Wire. I, it wasn't Game of Thrones, but I'd been watching a series that had finished. And I you know, just had that feeling of I wanted more of the same or wanted something similar. Started watching The Wire and it just wasn't really doing it for me. Um, but uh, I consider that, you know, I totally accept that The Wire has received a great deal of critical acclaim. And I'm sure it's a very good series.
One of the biggest problems I find with any sort of television is, uh, you know, when you have a TV series which is very successful, or whatever, and then they just want to keep that success going and just keep punching out series after series after series, and you get to a point where you're just like, you know what? I know this is to you guys. It just feels like you're printing dollar bills, but to me, if you're not, if you're not making it better, stop making it. Come on, thank you. Um, I've just had so many times where you watch a series and you're loving it, and then the next series comes out and you're like, oh god, you know, we need fresh ideas, guys. Flogging a dead horse. I definitely, I've felt that a few times with certain series. I'd rather be left wanting than left thinking, ah, oh, this should have ended two series ago. <laughs> I want to watch the movies featuring Ron, don't we all? Pinky Blinders. <laughs> Pinky Blinders. Um, I have watched, I think, series one of Pinky Blinders, and I, I, I it's shot beautifully. Um... It's got a real style about it that I like. Um, I, I'm not sure if I will watch more of it. We'll see. Um, started watching Everything Everywhere all at once last night and it didn't grab me. It really did not grab me. All my wife who was sitting there watching it going, no. And of course, then there's, um, you know, something like Stranger Things, which of course was just like this great big thing. Stranger Things, yeah, whoa. And then Series 2 came out, and I was like, yeah, it's still all right. Series 3 came out, and I was like, oh, this is pretty stupid. Series 4 came out, and I heard people saying, oh, they're back to their good old selves again. And I'm like, no, they ain't. Uh, and they're doing another one, and I think that's the last. I think it's stopping after Series 5. Not before time, really. I just feel like they've run out of ways of keeping it fresh. And God, I tell you what. Did anyone else get sick of that friggin' Kate Bush song? Jeez. Right, so I've replaced another two chips. If we're still not working, uh, we will move on to the SE30 because I owe it to Javier to get that thing sorted out. Right, okay, we've got it in there. We're going to do a quick test. Let's we just change cameras to the, so we can see the mess. There's the, that. And we will press the power button. Pop. Chime. Ah. Bummer. It's in full voice. So, I have now replaced... There are eight chips there, and I believe I've replaced five. So I've got three left. Oh, excuse me. And then, of course, if it still doesn't work, then we've got to start looking elsewhere, looking at the schematic and finding out other chips that might have something to do with the RAM. I, I, I suspect um, U22 might be one of them, or maybe U10 or U11, but I won't know without looking at a schematic. So, um, so at this point, I will put it out here to the folks in the chat. Do you want me to just replace the last three and see what happens? Or do you want me to start working on the SE30? The choice is yours. This is interactive viewing, this is. Mm -hmm. Since the X-Files, everything basically just sucks. You know, Jay, I, I do think the X-Files thing for you is looking through it with rose-coloured glasses based on the age you were when you saw it. Because at a certain age, X-Files is pretty awesome, but, you know. Um, so we've got replaced last three. Repla we've got three for replacing, one for SE. If you don't vote now, you won't get your chance. Have your say. Downing it's the ram at this point. Yep, me too. Do them both at the same time. You've got a lot of confidence in me, Carthor. <clears throat> Might as well finish it off. There you go. The age was when I saw it was 39 as I watched it three weeks ago. I mean, for the first time. We know you watched that a lot when you were a youngster. 
It's something that you watch on a regular basis. It's one of your circulations. We'll talk about that quite a bit. Um, I've been watching old Doctor Who episodes lately um, to put me to sleep. I know that sounds terrible. I know that's not a glowing recommendation, but with these sorts of the old, the original Doctor Who's, their, their pace was a little bit on the slow side. And of course, I've seen them all many times. So you know, when I lie there in bed and I put them on on the iPad, I put my headphones in, and uh, I just lie there and I just fall asleep. Usually in about five or six minutes. And then when I sort of realise that I'm falling asleep, I just take the headphones out, put the iPad down, and just clock straight out. Uh, a lot of people, you know, they sort of say, oh, you know, you shouldn't be looking at your devices before going to sleep and all that. And I accept that. If you're someone who struggles with sleep, you shouldn't be looking at phones and iPads before going to bed. But I am not someone that struggles with sleep. I, I, I am a master at it. Um, sleep, for me, does not uh, come hard. I just, I just sleep. I'm really, really good at it. So, yeah, I just... I just watch a bit of a show to just blank the brain a little bit, stop me from thinking about things, and then, uh, ah, Jeremy, I've got one of those as well, got the old CPAP, or well, technically it's an APAP, but uh, yeah, uh, it, it, is, it is something interesting about a sleep, if you are someone that sleeps with a CPAP, if you do have a bit of sleep apnea, um, once the mask goes on, it is, it's sleepy time, you know, it's sort of like telling your brain it's sleepy time. And so the mask goes on. I, I have mine come on full pressure straight away. I don't, because they have a feature on CPAP machines called ramping. And the idea is that you're meant to be falling asleep as the pressure builds slowly. And so that you, you know, you're, you're not noticing how strong that pressure is, but I don't like ramping. So I just have it come full pressure at the beginning. So I just put it on, vroom. Lie, lie down and yeah the, the old CPAP is a good way of telling your body it's time for sleep and if you are someone that snores heavily go get check for sleep apnea CPAP could change your life just let it be said whoopsie Did it do back in 30 minutes like that? Who does he think? Who does he think he is? <clears throat> Most health insurance will practically throw one at you. Yeah, I ended up actually buying the one that I have now from a guy who sells refurb units. So what happens is he gets hold of the units because it's a, the one that I have is a ResMed, and ResMed is an Australian company. In actual fact, they're just up the road from here. Um, it's about a probably a 10 minute drive for me to get there, uh, which is kind of convenient when you're after parts and things like that. But um, they sell these ResMed machines for more in this country than buying them in the US because we're Australians and we all have disposable cash. That's not entirely true, but yeah, Australians always get charged more for stuff. And um, uh, my health insurer will will cover a certain amount of money towards a CPAP, but I don't think they actually are compensating enough. But anyhow, that's another story. Okay, I found this guy uh, selling refurb units on uh, eBay. What he does is he buys parts, I think, from overseas, and then he gets the main unit, and then he just replaces all replaces the parts that can wear on them, whether it be a pump or anything so all of the stuff that could potentially be contaminated by a human things like all the pipes and hoses and stuff he replaces all of those and all of the you know everything inside it that you know would um would stop it from being you know you don't want to be using someone else's CPAP machine let's face it uh and then he sells them for an incredibly reasonable price I mean it's like hundreds less so the one that I've got now I bought from this guy and I've been so happy with it uh where'd I put the chips did I take them off yet? Not sure I took them off yet. No, I didn't. 
Let's whip these little fellas off. Whip. Cool whip. <clears throat> Can't have pie without cool whip. Yours are ResMed too, yeah. Uh, and they've been doing it the longest, basically. ResMed, they were originally called ResCare. They, um, when they went public, became public company, which I remember them doing because they were actually a client of mine. I should have bought shares in them at the time, I tell you. But anyhow, um, they, um, uh, they were the first to actually start producing them. Now there are quite a few players in the, uh, in the CPAP game. For anyone who's not aware of what I'm actually referring to, it's um, it's a machine for people who have sleep apnea, which is a condition where while you're asleep, your airways actually just close up for a brief amount of time and you temporarily starving your brain of oxygen during that time. And then you then kind of, your body then eventually reacts and you start breathing again. But some people end up having these apneas many many times you know they might have several in an hour and that ongoing stress on the body um, just with this regular brief starving of oxygen in the system can be incredibly bad not to mention of course that it means you're not, not sleeping particularly soundly so you might wake up the next morning and you don't feel well rested um, continuous positive airway pressure yep um, and so basically what happened is there was a guy this is you know before this is how it all kind of started there was a guy who had such bad sleep apnea that he virtually just didn't sleep at night uh and then there was a doctor who thought you know what i want to try something here and he actually pulled the guts out of a vacuum cleaner he actually he, he was actually parts of a vacuum cleaner and he rigged up the first kind of homemade cpap machine he set it up so that he could alter the amount of pressure that was coming out and he set this guy up um, put a mask on him um, you know sort of just very gradually started adding some pressure to him you know to him as his breathing and all of a sudden the sleep apnea stopped he just and then just started sleeping um, and so then they've got obviously gone and refined this machine and they've got them now so they've got humidifiers in them so that you've actually the air you're breathing in actually has some moisture in it rather than it just being dry air which of course would just dry your mouth out like you wouldn't believe and they're all different types of masks and stuff like that it's amazing stuff interesting technology still have two events and I haven't looked at mine in a while I think the main the main advantage I like about it is when I'm side sleeping I don't have many apnea apnea events but I do when I'm sleeping on my back and that of course makes me largely a side sleeper but it's just nice when you have the CPAP machine if for some reason shoulders sore or I've been lying on my side for too long and I'm getting aches I can actually lie on my back and sleep whereas before if I was lying on my back I always had really bad sleep Uh, but yeah, life-changing for some people. Life-changing. Anyone here who did not want to know about CPAP machines, I apologise. Um, if you're sitting there thinking, what is going on with branches today? Talking about medical equipment. I remember talking to an anaesthetist once, and he was saying that... Uh, he can always tell when he's doing surgery on people who use a CPAP machine because when people come out of surgery and they have an oxygen mask on them, one of the first things that people do is they pull the mask off. But people, people who use CPAP machines, when they wake up, they, they leave the mask on. Uh, CPAP, <laughs> CPAP's creations. Uh, honestly, here for the rabbit hole, yeah, we never know where it's going to end up doing. Never, never, never. Um, for anyone who was joining the stream a little bit late, um, I uh, I was a little a couple of minutes late starting because I was stuffing some McDonald's down my mouth, or as we call them in Australia, Maccas. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> Whoopsie. I um, as people know, I'm a Mac person, and I have four laptops that I use as my main laptops. Now that might seem a little excessive to some, but hear me out. Hear me out. Um, the first laptop I have is a 2016 MacBook Pro uh, i5. Oh God, come on. Why am I having so much trouble with this one little pin? It's uh, a, yeah, an i5, dual 2 gigahertz. Not particularly powerful, but it's a 2016 model. It's Retina, nice, clear, sharp display. I do like it. Why is solder not sticking to this pin? Thank you. Um, and that's the one that I probably use the most, like if I'm going to a meeting or something, I take it along because it stops me looking like some sort of weird enthusiast by bringing a 10 year old um, laptop with me. 2016 still looks reasonably modern. Um, God, my tip is ugly. Ugly tip. And uh, Jeremy, hello. And then the, um, so that's the first one, 2016 MacBook Pro Retina screen. Then I've got a uh, 2012 quad core i7 15 inch macbook pro it's got an ssd in it and i think 16 or 32 i think 16 gigs of RAM, 32 maybe i can't remember and that one's the workhorse that one's a really powerful one that's got some grunt so that's the one that i use if i need some power because it's got that quad core i7 uh, it's a good Mac. I've got Big Sur running on that one. No, Monterey. Sorry, Monterey, as Tim Cook would say. Monterey. Um, and I should do this a little bit more systematically. I'm not at the moment. So, there we go. Um, and then the third laptop I have is a little... MacBook Air. Now I can't remember what year model it is. I think it's 2014, but it's a CTO model. That's the custom to order. Um, and it's one that has eight gigs of RAM and, or is it 16? Eight gigs, I think, eight gigs. And it's got a one terabyte SSD in it. Or is it 512? I don't know. Anyhow, oh, and it's an i7 model. It's not an i5. Uh, and that's, I love the little uh, MacBook. It's a little 11 inch MacBook Air. I love them because they're so small. They're so portable. They're so light. So it's just like a, it's like an iPad with a keyboard. Uh, so I use that one sometimes because it's so small. That's the one I take on holiday with me. You know, just keep it in the glove compartment just in case of emergencies. If I have someone ring me up and say, oh, I've got my password. I can sort of look it up, sort them out. Oops, I haven't done this one either. Um, and then the fourth laptop that I have is a 2010 i7, it's a dual i7, not a quad, 17 inch MacBook Pro. And I love that one because of that gigantic screen. That beautiful big 17 inch screen. Uh, it's the one I take if I think I'm going to need to actually do proper work when I go away on holidays. And someone's sort of like, yeah, I'm going to need you to do some graphic stuff or something like that. I really stuff this one up. Just make sure everyone is aware of that. Um, but we'll fix it. Got to check on the chat. Uh, 40 people watching at the moment. Hello to everyone who is watching. If you haven't said hello, please say hello. If you do say hello and I don't say hello back, it's nothing personal, unless you are one particular person. Um, but for most people, if you say hello, I will say hello back. Um, and uh, if I do, as I say, miss, it's nothing personal. It's just because I've missed it, which does happen sometimes when I'm staring here in a microscope. 
instead of staring at the chat. Uh, if you are watching this, watching one of my live streams for the first time, um, and you have come to the channel because of my stuff on ultrasonic cleaners, just letting you know this is another thing that I do. I do work on vintage Max, and have you used a 32 inch monitor for your work? Uh, no, no. I have three monitors connected to my main Mac and they are both, what is that, 2560 by 1440 or something like that, whatever they call that resolution, probably 1440 or VHD or something, I can't remember what they call it. Two of them and then the third one is a smaller 24 um, inch Apple monitor. Um, and that one, I, oh, got a bridge. That one is deliberately small because if I'm doing presentations or something like that and I want to share my screen, I don't want to share a massive screen with people because if they're looking at it on a small computer and then they see my gigantic screen and they can't make anything out because it's too small. So I have a smaller screen that I use for when I'm sharing. That's my third screen. Okay, we're looking good. Oh, there's another bridge. There we go. So just checking to make sure we've got no more bridges. Cool. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Cheese that sticks to the cardboard. Yeah, but getting it off, you end up eating a bit of cardboard usually, don't you? I honestly have not had a Pizza Hut pizza in an eternity. There are so many pizza places around here that make absolutely delicious pizza, which is far superior to Pizza Hut pizza. So, we just... Um, generally have there's a place up the road that does pizzas and kebabs and oh man their pizzas are awesome righty okay so this is the final test if this one doesn't work still this will be the next step will be uh for me to spend some time some quality time staring at a uh um, uh, schematic diagram just checking to make sure I put them all on the wrong way because every now and again I make mistakes I am only a woman okay so totally not expecting this to work just letting you know but it'll be nice if it does uh, because it just sort of seems like the problem is probably something else and not just the RAM chips and it does tell me that all those RAM chips I removed are okay, which is kind of good. Put them in a little container. Good RAM chips, it'll say. Plugged in. Let's change the view to the side. Are you with me? Are you with me? Are you all with me? Side view. Okay, ready, steady, and ha, ha, ha! To all the naysayers out there that said it wasn't the RAM. We'll get a question mark here because there's no hard drive in this, but that is, oh, actually, and if it booted, it would crash as well because it's a 575 in a color classic but uh yeah it was the ram one of those that i just took off so uh max if you're around you've now got two working 575 boards so uh yeah we okay just going to enjoy that moment because i don't have a lot of successes these days and it's it's, it's mainly because people keep sending me really difficult stuff. So I'm basically just going to blame someone else like a good old narcissist. But uh, um, I, I will say in my defense that, yeah, people do send me a lot of difficult stuff these days. They're doing the easy stuff themselves, and that's great. Ah, people are feeling enabled enough to go in and do this themselves. I'm like, that is awesome. But when, when, they, when they then have problems, they send it to me. So, yeah, that's fun. So 
let's have a look here. We've got a few SE30s floating around. The one that is Javier's is actually labeled Joe, even though we know it's not Joe's. It says Joe's. Joe's. Eat at Joe's. Um, yeah, two, two working boards. Ah, 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 ah. Right, so what do we know about this one? Um, battery bombed. Battery bombed. Uh, I have since put a new battery holder on there. I have replaced the diodes in here and I have put on a new real-time clock chip and I have put on a new, uh, what do you call it? I think, uh, uh, oscillator, crystal oscillator. So for the real-time clock. So that's the work that I have done over there and I'm feeling pretty good about it. Um, under here is where all the fun is. So this is all of the funky stuff going on. Uh, this is where we did all of our trace repairs and then I've coated them with UV solder mask. Now what I'm really hoping is I don't have to take that off. So that is yours, Javier, that is yours. Um, do, do, do. It'll work until it's ultrasonic -ed. Yeah, I, I feel pretty good about this one. This one doesn't have any bad corrosion. So I think this one will come out of the ultrasonic in the same condition it went in. Well, cleaner, of course. I don't believe it will be broken. So, one of the great things we have with the old SE30 is we have some very, very smart people that have put their mind to um, kind of documenting the whole SE30 experience. And what I am able to do is I'm able to grab a few little pieces of paper, which are here somewhere. I'll get them in a minute. <clears throat> I can go with a multimeter and I can go bip, 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 and just check and see the data is getting through. And I believe it is something to do with an address line on the ROM. Uh, and I just think one of them, one of them has busted. Um, we'll just see what happens. Mac Mini G4. Someone was going, what happened to someone? You know, I love those little Mac Mini G4s. I mean, I don't, what are you going to do with them these days? I mean, they're sort of a G4. There's a, like a one gigahertz model, isn't there, I think? But they're just such cute little things. I love them. Um, I've got a G4, the old white ones, the white and gray ones. I've got a G4, one of those, and I've got an Intel, one of those. I think it's like a 1.83 or something like that. I know, they're cute. I like them. I like them a lot. Uh, right, so what we need to do to start off with is we need to get the paperwork um, with the uh, sort of instructions on it and then we need to start going in and tapping out these little address lines on the ROM chip here. Uh, I have a huge, massive thank you has to be said to uh, um, uh, LMNO. Uh, some of you may know LMNO from uh, some Discord or places like that. And he, during uh, the COVID time, re completely recreated the SE30 um, schematic uh, with all the plugs and stuff and everything like that. And you can search it because it's not an image. It's actually a real like document with text so you can go and find things. But the thing that he did, which is just awesome for the rest of the world, is this 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 here this little diagram here which as you can see it's got a little bit of mess on it and i've written a little recapping guide on the back as well it wouldn't be wouldn't be a brankus piece of paper if it didn't have a recapping guide on the back um and uh make me one point two five one point five sorry just looking at this stuff just keeping up uh, I suppose this board wasn't bad enough to be a donor for an SE30 Reloaded. Yeah, um, no, I guess. I mean, it was the whole thing about this was really trying to get it working, and we did. I mean, we got it working. It was working. I used it. Now it's not working. So um, I need to look at this with my magnify part, so I have to hold it close to my face. And we need to work our way through the ROM. We're starting at pin 4. We do pin 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 
31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, and 45. Now, pin one is this end. So I'm going to have to stick my head in front. Maybe I should go with a side view so you don't have to see the top of my bald head. There we go. So that's pin one. I think at this end here? No. Is it pin one at this end? No. I think it's pin one at that end. I'm pretty sure it's pin one at that end. We'll find out. We can actually test it really easily. Let's go to pin two. Uh, and pin, sorry, we'll go to pin four and we'll go to pin three on UJ2. So this is UJ2 here. There's pin one, two, so that's pin three. Pin three. So that from there should go to pin four, one, two, three, four. Now, how are we going to test this? We, you know what we're going to need? Everyone knows what we need to do to test something like this. We need a really useful piece of equipment here. We need a multimeter, a digital multimeter, an inexpensive digital multimeter with lots and lots of functions. The Kaiweets KM601, so much multimeter, such a low price. You will find links in the description along with the discount code. Do yourself a favor. There we go, we're just gonna have it sitting here for the moment while we do this so that we can just see how good it is. Look at that screen. How cool is that screen? Okay, so look at that, beautiful. Still only on my second set of batteries since getting this. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. Whoops. Now I did make a case for this myself and I managed to break it while I was showing Jay how to, how to put it on. Um, I found a better way of putting it on after breaking it. So I do need to print a new one that uh, that's coming. But for the moment, the bottom of my case is broken off. Now we need to put this into beepity beep mode. Some crazy people call it continuity mode, but that's where we put these two things together and they go beep. Um, now, uh, so what did I say? I said UJ2 and it's pin three. Is that it? Yep, pin three. Should also go to pin six, three, four, five, six. Yep, it does. And it should be one, two, three, four. Yep, okay. So it is one at this end. So we're gonna make ourselves a few little notes here to make life easier for us. I'm going to get some marks. Let me get a, uh, get one of these pen thingies. Here we go, here's a pen. So, we've got one, I should zoom in a bit, shouldn't I? I'm gonna zoom in a bit. Uh, uh, oops, that's a classic analog board. Sorry about that. So. There we go. Right in, in the middle of it. Right in the middle of it. You can smell the caps. Ah. Hmm. Okay, where was I? I was about to... Oh, sorry, I got caught up with the chat. I was about to make this easier for myself by going... One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten... 11, 12, 13, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64. Let's hope it's got 64 pins, because that's how many I counted. 
sorry, and I have this multimeter in the way. Let me move it. There we go. So, so, uh, uh, uh. there we go. Right. So now we need to go and start working our way through this and doing the testing. And I do apologize, this is dull, but it has to be done. I'm actually getting some of these backlog boards out now and actually sent off back to their owners even. And I just want to, I'm in a, on a bit of a roll there. So, so pin five, one, two, three, four, five. Pin five is supposed to go to pin two of that one we were just looking at. And it doth, it doth. Then we go six. That's going to pin 10 of that chip we were looking at. One, and that's one, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Cool. And, and then seven, he goes to pin 11. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yep. Okay, so that's the first one good. So what we're looking at here is a RAM MUX chip. And we're just making sure that that's uh, good. And there are other things we can test, but this is, this is at least we know whether these connections are coming through. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's move on to pin eight. <coughs> Excuse me. Eight will go to three of UI three. Eight. UI two. UI two, I mean. That's this one. So, pin three, one, two, three. Looking good. Um, and then nine. Nine will go to pin two. Good. And five, two, three, four. Good. I should actually have checked that other one before. I will just check that quickly. Three, four, five, six. Yep, good. Okay. Skip. And then we go to, now we go to pin 31. So that's 10, 20, 31. 31, and then we're going to pin 10 of UI2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Good. And it's also 13. Good. And then 32. Sorry, someone's got to put something into the chat. I'm boring myself here. Someone needs to be interesting. Uh -uh. 32. That's 11 and 14. 11. Good. Can you imagine? Oh dear. What a horrendous thought. Okay. 32, and we've got 33. 33 is going to uh, UJ3. Three. What have I done? What, what, what? 33 goes to 3 and 6 of UJ3. 33 goes to 3 and 6 of UJ3. UJ3, 1, 2, 3. 30, 1, 2, 3. Well, that's an interesting thing. Well, that's a fine how do you do. Uh, let's just try 34 going to 2 and 5. No, 2. This, this. 
I'm in the wrong one. Look at the wrong one, surely. UI3. UI3? Yeah, I am. I'm completely on the wrong chip. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Two. Two. Two and five. One, two, three, four, five. Five, two, five. Good. Uh, Thirty-five. Can't type because the suspect is killing me. Oh, yeah. Uh, ultrasonic laundry tub is going well. Um, I, uh, I need to do a video of... I need to do a video of ultrasonic cleaning a bunch of things. I've got a whole stack of things that I want to clean. Um, I have another video that I have to get out first because I, as with a lot of the videos that I do, there are time things and of course I'm a, I've got a full-time job so um, I just squeeze things in where I can. But it is going, it's going well. I mean, I'm really, really happy with it. So um, now this one is 35 goes to 10. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight. Yep. Goes to 10 and it goes to 13. Yep. So, and then 36. Eleven and fourteen. Yep. Okay, then on to the next one. And this one is U J three. That's this one. Good. And then it's forty, that is eleven and fourteen. Cool. And 41, we nearly finished this bit, bit folks, so just, uh, all good, all good. Uh, 41 is, this is UJ4. We're moving into a realm here where it's not that bad, so. Three, okay. one, two, three. Don't, don't do this to me. It does this to me where I go, oh, that's it. I found it. And then I realize I'm looking in the wrong col column. So 41. I'm on 41. Multimeter still on. Always a good idea to check that when you're testing this stuff out. It should go to pin 3 of UJ4. UJ4. Pin 3. It's not, it's not going. So, this is where, just to make sure I don't get overly excited, I go and grab another board. This is a working SE30 board. This is my working SE30 30 board. And we go in and we do a test. How often do you find faults visually as opposed to buzzing it out? Most of the time. Uh, most of the stuff that I get sent to me is there's usually visual stuff there's usually visual damage and so um yeah it's 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 quite frequent uh this by the way is a um big mess of wires rom chip you can get these as replacements what i would recommend to anyone who has these get some solder on these pins because this is a much much thinner pcb than the original rom the original rom's sort of floating around here somewhere can't be too far away here man it's like this thickness is probably, uh, it's funny, it doesn't actually look that much bigger, but it, it is. And when you put them in, these ones here, they slot in, they fit quite snugly. These ones swim a little bit, and then you end up having to push them down. 
So what I uh, like to do, and what I'm going to do to this one, is just get some flux on there and then just roll, get nice little solder beads on one side. So when you put this in, it really slots in hard. Well, <clears throat> yeah, so, um, yeah, I mean, just in answer to your question, Paul, um, yeah, typically what I'm doing is uh, is just fine seeing a problem with my eyes and then, and then fixing it. Um, and if I'm going to be totally honest, that is more interesting to watch than buzzing things out. Um, I find that, um, you know, this sort of diagnostic work, I find just makes such boring viewing that I try not to do it on live stream. The main reason why I'm doing it today is because I've just got to get Jay's bo uh, Joe's board back to him, or Javier's board back to him, so... Right, so what we were saying, we were saying 41. That's 40, so that's... Nine pins across from there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine going to... Yeah, okay. Uh-huh. I, I don't want to get my hopes up yet because every time I do something sucks all the fun away but it really does look like oh poo poo head I think it just must be ugly solder there I'm having trouble getting contact but Yeah, I'm just going to clean up these joints. <sighs> See, every time you get your hopes up, you think, I found it, I found it, I found it. No, nah, I haven't found it. Yeah, this is just really crusty solder, and I was just having trouble getting contact on it. So we'll just clean that up a smidge. This is the lazy, lazy solder rework, where you actually just leave the chip there, you don't actually take it off. And uh, get rid of all the old solder. Multimeter's telling me it's gonna switch off in a minute. And then we put some new solder. Now if I was Steve, I would be swearing at it. Steve does like to swear at his multimeter when he, when it tells him it's going to switch off. A Rossman worth of flux. That was about a half Rossman, that. Um, okay, so let's just test this again. I think this will tap out much easier now. Uh, yeah. What are you? I've got a critter on me. Be gone. 41 goes to 3 and 6, so we've got oh, 3. Oh, all right, you're working. Yeah, okay. 41. Why are you messing with me? 2, 3. There is something very confusing here. Well, now the multimeter switched off, so that's not confusing at all. <clears throat> so the multimeter, uh, the way this one works is, and it's the same as the way my, um, on my Fluke works, um, just using the multimeter isn't enough for it to cancel out the auto power off. You actually need to press a button on the dial to kind of wake it up again. So if I'm just sitting here testing, it still considers it like it's, you know, not being used sort of thing. 
Um, there's definitely something curious going on here. Because, I mean, uh, there is, I'm going to just, um, ow, jeez, that was a nasty sound coming from my elbow. Uh, 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 uh. There is definitely something awry, but I need to find out what it is, because I'm getting it sometimes, I'm not getting it other times. 41, so we're on beepity beep mode, so just comparing test devices, if in doubt, try something else. Right, let's measure the resistance, um, because I think that might tell us something. 41 to 3, 40 ohms. Seems kind of high for something that's meant to be just straight connected, doesn't it? Uh, let's just go back and check one of the others. 40, no, we'll try 37. 37, and that is going to UJ3. 37, UJ3, is that it? That's 0.5 ohms. 41, Forty-one. Forty ohms. That's, okay, so it's giving us a buzz, but it's not meant to have that sort of level of resistance there. Let's try this, one, two, three, four. Uh, UJ2. Same again, 0.2 ohms. So there's definitely something fishy going on. Uh, is there enough space under the socket to probe? Well, I can actually, I can do it from the other side. So I just got to, oh crap, sorry. Uh, that was my ROM falling down. Uh, sorry, Mr. ROM. Uh, I will just need to find out where it is. 40. So that's, hang on, 33, 1, 32, so that starts at 33, 33, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, okay, 41, okay, we were doing it from 41, weren't we, yep, okay, so it starts at 33, so that's 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, all right, so I've already got a Y going there, but I'm, so that's already a repair. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to find out where that resistance is coming in. So I'm going to just scrape away a little bit of this UV mask here. Because it's this big fiat wire. So that's 33, 34, 35, 38, 39, 40, 41. It's this one. It's this wire. Alright, so we'll just I'll show you on the microscope what I'm seeing, because you won't be able to see it terribly well. So this is 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41. So there's 41 there. So I'm just going to scrape, scrape off a little bit there so I can get a, a probe on it. That travels under here, under here, under here, and then to there. And then we're going to give that a little bit of a scrapey scrape. And we're also going to see, yeah, well, we'll just see. We'll, uh, we'll see what we see. And when we see it, we'll know what we've seen. Okay, getting 0.2 there. So let's now measure from there to the other side. Break on to, through to the other side. There we go, there to there. 0.1. Okay, so it's no issue with the pin on the socket. There's no issue with the wire going up underneath to here. The resistance is happening when it gets through to the other side of the board. And you know what that means, don't you? It means you've got to take this fucking battery holder off. Oh, well. Oh, well. <laughs> All right. 
So. At least. Oh, where's my soldering on? Oh, it's in my hand. <laughs> oh, dear. Who knew that senility was going to hit me quite so fast? Uh, there is another thing with this board, and I'm not placing any blame on anyone, uh, because it's I, it's my understanding that the stuff done to this board was not by any of the current owners. So it was not done by Javier, it was not done by Steve when it was sent to him, it was not done by Joe when it was sent to him, uh, but someone did do some funky stuff to this board. And uh, it sort of left us with... Uh, a few really bad looking uh, um, vias in particular. Okay, so I've whipped off the little battery holder, which came off quite easily because uh, the vias have been so badly damaged that it holds on to, so there wasn't that much solder holding it on. Um, so that's that. Now let's have a look, Siruni, here. We're going to do a little bit of following. So this is pin three. This is the one we're talking about here, pin three. You can see because it's been all squished. Uh, you can't really see much, can you? It's got a lot of glare. Let me just clean this up a little bit. Alcohol. <sighs> oh, say that word, alcohol. Mm. I've run out of tissues. I need a new box of tissues in here. I can't just keep using paper towels when I should be using tissues. Right. So this is the chip here, it's the UJ4. And I did tidy up all of the, uh, the soldering on that. And we just have to find out where he's going now, now, then, then, now. Uh, which one of these is it going to be? It's going to be this one. See, I've got that bloody door song on my head now. <laughs> Mac 84 touched this. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Not that one. Must be this one then. Oh, come on. Where is it? Is it this one? <sighs> See, if you weren't as lazy as me, you'd actually look underneath to find out where it went through. It's the second one. It's the second one. It's the second one. So let's just try that now. So that's one, two, I guess. <laughs> I do have the whole issue with it being quite early in the day still for drinking. Um, I am someone who does like to try and set standards. This one. This one here. Now let's just check the level of resistance we're getting there. That's going from pin to here. We'll see. Stay still. Point two. So that's good. So now we've got from here to pin three. Oh, that's. That's not right. Is that right? That doesn't seem right. It's even worse than it was before. Let's just check that. 41. Twenty-eight. 
20 ohms, 22 ohms, 24 ohms. What is, no, this one. Was it this one? No, someone's breaking my brain. Stop it. It's still Friday night here. <laughs> Uh, you can actually, for anyone who's ever wanting to know what time it is here, um, if they're not in the same time zone, you'll see it up on the top left-hand corner. You can see that it's 2.30pm, uh, coming up to 2.30pm uh, on a Sunday. Um, and can I just tell anyone out there that if you enjoy your job, Sundays feel very differently to how they do if you don't enjoy your job. If you're in a job that you really don't like doing, Sunday comes along and you feel pretty rotten. And I'm one of the lucky people that doesn't feel rotten when a Sunday comes along. I'm not saying I don't feel good on Friday night, knowing that I've got two days where I really don't have to do anything. Well, actually, I do have to do things. I just have to do different things. Um, but, yeah. Just want it to be known that this board is currently trolling me. Um, it's cyberbullying me. This board is cyberbullying me. Okay, so there to there. Dun, 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 dun. So you can't hear the beep, but here's a beep. Beep, beep. Okay, so this trace that I have just scrapped away, no one leaves till the board is fixed. <laughs> 4.30 should really sleep. Uh, which part of the world are, you, uh, world are you in, Francois? I know you've told me before, and, and please don't take it personally that I've forgotten. It's basically because I've got a head like a sieve. Um, there are some amazing things that I remember, of pointless things, but um, yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm guessing it's in uh, Europe because of the time. <coughs> France. Well, that does make sense with a name like Francois Revol. Okay. My birthday coming up on the 27th. Yeah, happy birthday, Joe, for the 27th. That's tomorrow for me. 4.30 a.m. in Sweden. Hello, Carthor. Hello to... Uh, I, I know I've said hello to you before, but uh, I didn't know you were in Sweden, so hello to, to you in Sweden. Right, okay. I'm, I'm getting distracted here. So this is the trace here. And okay, he goes to there. So I think what we're ultimately going to have to do here is we're going to have to see what's going on under this little blob of mess here because I think that is my problem. And it's times like this, you think, damn, I did a good job with this UV mask. Is Dana here? I don't think Dana's here. Dana should be here, but he's not. Because he loves it when people use a scalpel like this and actually dig into a board. I've seen him tell me how much he loves seeing it. Look at that. Look at that. So this is an interesting one because I remember this at the time when I was doing this, that I ended up kind of doing this repair in two halves. I did it with one half on one side and one half on the other side. For whatever reason, the wire broke or something like that, I'm not sure. What are the odds the cleaner messes up something under solder mask, though? The odds are pretty slim. But what I'm thinking, so here's, 
There is a really important factor I need to put into this, Jay. This is something I need to mention to you. I didn't UV mask it, then test it, then clean it, then tested it, which is a mistake. I appreciate that. I UV masked it, then cleaned it, then tested it. I could have stuffed something up while UV masking it. That's what I'm sort of thinking is possibly the thing with the thing. So we've got a big fat wire there, and they've got a little skinny wire here, and then we've got something going on there, and I don't know what's going on there, so we'll have to investigate that. So I'm going to get a proper board, one that's not a train wreck. Oh, damn, this has got battery. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, that's all right. So this is the one. Uh, it's the one directly below the pin of the uh, clock, uh, what are you, oscillator, this one here. So it comes down here. Run on along there. Okay, so let's just check this. We should be getting there to there, and we are good. Right. Oh, gone off again. So. So let's keep going here. Let's see if we can figure out what's happening. Uh, we are going to go from pin three here, which is just off camera, pin three here. And we are going to go across here, and we're gonna to go to there. No, sorry, there. Whoop. Yeah, it's very, very flaky. Let's uh, have a look. This joint here is not good. When I push this, I lose continuity on it. So we're not, we don't have a proper join there. So we're going to t tidy this up. Um, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. This connection, yes, is definitely about as solid as Jay's front teeth. For anyone who doesn't know, Jay has some interesting dental stories to tell any time you care to ask him. My eye touched that. <laughs> um, all right, so, you know, uh, if I hadn't already put all that UV mask on there, I would probably be replacing this whole wire. Um, but removing it from the other side will present us a lot of issues. So I'm just going to attempt to do a much better wire repair on this one than I did before. Um, or actually, let, well, yeah, let's just blame Steve that Steve did before. Um, this is clearly one of Steve's repairs. There's no, no way it was mine, uh, even though it's uh, <coughs> not the same wire that Steve uses, but that, 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 well, let's, not, let's not worry about that. Um, so I'm going to attach this trace right back here to this flat part. So it's gonna go right across the top here. So I've got that full area there to go to. I'm gonna run it across the top and then I'm gonna run it up here as well, and I might even get it to turn this corner, like that. So, gotta start somewhere. I think it'll probably be easier because I'm right-handed. I think it'll probably be easier for me to start it from the right-hand side and run it across to the left. So let's get some flux on there.
All right, okay. Where do I, here's my wire. I was like, I grab a piece of wire and then I forget where it is. So we'll get some solder onto this first for anyone out there who thinks I say solder funny. Sorry. <clears throat> Oh, Jay, um, if you get a chance, you remember that video that you worked with me on a while ago about the, uh, you did some uh, ultrasonicing in your crest, your little crest ultrasonic cleaner with some foil. Had someone recently placed a comment next to that video and just said, anyone who says that, um, that, uh, what was it? that the pits in the aluminium are caused by standing waves has no idea what they're talking about. And he said that, that whole, doing that whole video in response to someone who clearly had no idea what they were talking about, he said he just wishes people would watch these videos and say, I enjoyed that, good job, and, uh, and then move on. He was very critical of someone saying that standing waves thing when it was so obviously inaccurate um and uh and he was saying that you know we know what's causing the um the pits it's the cavitation it's the ultrasonic cavitation process and the whole standing waves thing is just pure nonsensey fictiony stupidity so I just thought I would mention that to you because it was quite a nice thing the person said. He was very, as I say, very critical of the, uh, of the people that leave ill-informed responses, which of course I get a lot of. You will get that really with any, if you do anything, if you do anything on the internet, anything youtube -y, you will always get someone that comes along and says that you're doing it wrong. Feeling better about this one now. I feel like this is a nice looking repair. And I do believe it will be more reliable as well. Uh, but we will check that. So we get our little beepity beeper and we will do pin 41. And then we will come across here to three. Yep. And I'm getting, let's just see what resistance I'm getting. I want something under 0.5 of an ohm. 0.2. Zippity doo Now, I haven't actually done every pin. I got up to 41 and kind of stopped. I probably should do the last three just for the sake of due diligence. And then we will test this out and we'll see whether Javier might actually get an SE30 at some stage in the foreseeable future. Especially my part in it. Yes, of course. It was fun to do. I mean, I don't know how enjoyable it was for people, but it was certainly a fun video to do. I especially like a little shtick at the beginning with the uh, phone call. I thought that was funny. <clears throat> I love that sort of shtick. A little bit of uh, kind of slapsticky silliness. All right. So uh, where were we up to? We were up to, well, we're up to changing camera views. That's where we're up to. We'll be breathing soon. Yeah, let's hope. I mean, look, don't get your hopes up. That's the last thing. You can never do that when it comes to this sort of stuff. But So 41, we have pin 3. We have pin 6. Then this one, this is 42, and we should have pin 2 and 5. 2, 5. Uh, and then we have 43. And that is pin 10 and... 10 and 13, 9, 10, 12, 13, and then the last one is 40, 40, 44, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40. Um, 
Yeah, it's 44, 11 and 14. 8, 9, 10, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, yep. And there is actually one more I can do here. This one here, this is 45. This should be three and six of UI4. Three, six. But then that's it. Then that's it. All the rest go to the glue chip and we won't worry about those for the moment. I'm feeling pretty good about this. I mean, I don't want to get anyone's hopes up, but I am feeling pretty good about it. Okay. <laughs> All right, so let's, uh, let's not keep anyone else in suspense for too much longer. Uh, this is my SE30. Don't keep this one uh, between my legs. Keep this one on the floor. Uh, this analog board, is this my analog board or is this that person I repaired? This is analog board. This is... Either way, it works. Oh, it looks like mine because this one's had nothing done to it. Yeah, this is mine. This is my crusty old analog board. So, this goes here. We need an anode cap in there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, we get that on there. Do I have one of those little extensions? Those make life a lot easier. Um, an extension, an extension, my kingdom for an extension. Then I can put it on the table and, ah, oh, there's an extension. It's kind of a bit rough. I uh, probably need to get another one. This one's definitely falling apart a bit, but it should still be able to serve the purpose for us. So this is just like an ATX cable. Steve was talking about this on his, uh, his stream the other day, it was his idea, freaking smart one. Um, his, uh, he got hold of a, uh, 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 um, got hold of an ATX cable, like just a, your average run of the mill ATX extension cable. And found that the, cause they're these Molex connectors, that they have um, the same sort of pattern of pins, even though we're only using uh, a th like two thirds of the pins that are on an ATX cable, that pattern is still correct. So I ended up just cutting the extra holes off so I didn't need it. You're only using, it's like half the cable. Um, but uh, yeah, it's very, very nifty. Very nifty. Now I need to clear a little bit of space to put this board. And then we will put, oops. Careful with the mouse, don't want to accidentally finish the live stream. Um, plug this in. This extension cable is looking a little bit rough, so if we get weirdness with power, that's going to be, that's going to be the cause. I've got ROM in there. Seems reasonably secure. We've got a little busted tab here. I better zoom out now. I zoomed in before, but now we need zoom out. Uh, uh, uh. Right. Okay. I really should be milking this, shouldn't I? I should be going. Have you seen some of those videos where they're demonstrating things and then they, before they do the actual thing, someone says, yeah, so that's, that's just normal glue you're using there. Yeah, yeah, this glue, yeah, it's um, just normal glue. And then every time they're about to do something, they break in the conversation to try and keep you watching. They're infuriating to watch. Um, here's a spoiker. I think this one works, but don't get upset if it doesn't. Uh, get a little bit of power. I'll just make sure everything's plugged in because, you know, that's plugged in, that's that. That's plugged in, that's plugged in. Never forget to put the ground on. Just a tip for anyone out there. No, not mentioning any names, but when you're working with CRTs, those ground wires, they're there for a reason. Don't forget to reground them. Okay, so, we're ready, set, go. No chime, which, yes. oh, shush, which is not a good sign. So we're probably going to be looking at SEMA CMAC, but don't despair just yet, because sometimes it can just be the, the ROM um, not in, in place. 
I can't see anything. Uh, here, let me let me twiddle a bit. Let me move things around so that we can actually look at the screen. It's pointless if we can't see it, isn't it? Alrighty. Oh, right here. Right here, right here, right here. As I said, there are all sorts of possibilities why this wouldn't be working at the moment, but we'll just start, we'll do them all one at a time. How about that? Okay, so to start off with, let's switch him on. Okay, got no chime. There's not even anything coming up on the screen, so that leads me to think that the problem is elsewhere. Could be this extension cable not getting power through. So I'm going to just ditch this extension cable and just hold this thing really awkwardly. Okay. All right, so let's try this again. This is just going power direct this time. Oh, I haven't got power cable into it. Got to put a power cable in there. Works better. Oh, got a freaking chime. I got a freaking chime. Got a freaking chime. Freaking chime. Freaking chime. Sorry, the brightness is up a little bit bright at the moment. Let me just calm that down. There we go. Da -na -na -na. Mm -mm -mm -mm. This is my happy song. Flashing question mark, that's what we like to see. I gotta say, um, I am absolutely freaking overjoyed about this. Um, being in that situation of going through all of the work to get it working then finding it not working uh, just as you're about to send it back to the owner uh, is absolutely freaking soul destroying. And then to have found something that was clearly wrong. And of course, the, it, we, were, we were a bit lucky there, you know, because it was a, a dicky connection. And we could just as easily have, it could have tested okay and then moved on and like, what next, what next? But the fact that it did actually start doing weird stuff to me while I was testing it, like it was beeping sometimes and not beeping other times. And then obviously we were measuring it with some resistance across it where it should have been zero resistance. It's like, yeah, oh, snooper time. Come on, Steve. Who do you think I am? I'm going to have to put a keyboard and a mouse in for that. Uh. Keyboard, no problem. It's right here. Fuck knows where the mouse is. Um, mouse, a mouse, my kingdom for a mouse. No, I've already done that joke, haven't I? Got to at least not do them in the same live stream. Uh, I know I have one here, a couple actually. There's, I've got a uh, trapezoid mouse. And then I've got one of the round ones, whatever they were called, Apple desktop mouse, fast mouse. They're here. They're in this room. I need to change glasses though, because these glasses are not good for searching. <laughs> um, mousy. Here, Mousy. Mousy. I'm looking for the cable. Ah, I see a cable. Cable that looks like it belongs to a mouse. Ugh. Yay! All right, so with a bit of luck, this little SCSI 2SD will have a working operating system on it and a copy of Snooper. But let's not get too excited about that. <laughs> That's so cool. It's so freaking cool. Uh -huh. 100 subs, Apples Anonymous. Did you hit 100 subs? Well done, Apples Anonymous. I have watched a few of your videos. I haven't in a while though, but that's not 
that's I haven't watched a lot of videos in a while I have been I really just haven't had much time to do any um, any video watching I you know I mean I, I try and stay up to date I, I'm trying just look, like watch a few I'm always, always trying to keep up to date with Steve's videos and 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 Sean's Sean from Action Retro and Dan from Canadian Computer Collector, but even them I'm behind at the moment. Just haven't had time. Uh, Jay, you're a fire starter. Are you a twisted fire starter? <laughs> Yeah, you're right, Jay. I haven't watched your videos in over 11 months. It'd be nice if you released some. Okay, so what do we got? Snooper, snooper, snooper. P Q R S. Snooper. Snooper 2. Let's see if we can't sort out this flickering of the screen. Because that's just annoying. I've only got 4 megs of RAM in this. Hope it works. <laughs> Super. Oh, geez, it's warm out here. It caught me off guard. Yep, exit. Let's go to that. Ping. We go to shutter speed. We go to. It's going to do some weird things here for a sec. Oh, there it is. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? It's pretty sharp. Something very cool is going to happen to this SE30 soon. Something very cool. Uh, this is my SE30. That is not not Javier's. Just having Javier's working, Javier's working is enough. Can you say? Wouldn't you say? It's enough to bring tears to your eyes. Uh, Righty, let's get going. Let's go here to logic tests. Now I don't have the little test things for the, or do I? No, they're, they're up in the, in the house. The little test things for the serial ports. So they are going to fail, uh, but we just want to make sure, we're going to worry about, oh, we'll test the RAM. Uh, and so the, the, the serial ports will fail because I don't have the loopbacks on there. Um, but, uh, but as long as it doesn't crash, if it crashes, you generally know there's something wrong with your serial port. Did you get your one sorted out, Steve? The one with the problem SCSI and serial? I can't remember. I know I watched most of that live stream, but I may have missed the end. Okay, test passed okay. So the RAM's okay, I mean, that's no big deal, but I think we knew the RAM was all right, but of course it can always be, you, you can end up with failing RAM because of the uh, MUX chips being damaged, so. Needed to do the schematic digging. Ah, weekend has been busy. Yes, indeed, has been busy, hasn't it, Steve? Uh... Yeah, handshake test fail. This is all. This is fine. Expected. Uh, without the loop back, it is going to fail. But generally, if you have a problem with a serial port, like a problem with the serial chips or something like that, it'll just crash. Uh, it will crash when you try and run this test. It'll just get to a point that it's gone. Good old six eight zero three zero CPU. Gotta love it. Brings back a lot of nostalgia for me. Just brings back. I, I had a um, uh, my parents, and obviously I used it a lot because this is when I used to live with my parents. But my parents had a uh, a Macintosh Classic. It was the first Mac that they ever bought. I mean, I'd been using Macs uh, in other environments, but it was the first Mac that um, that you know was sort of in the house, and so they bought a Macintosh Classic. And um, I don't know where it is now, so please don't ask. But um, uh, we ended up getting a warp 030 cpu upgrade for it 
uh, and that that jump from a 68k up to a 68030 was dizzying at the time. It was like wowzers. <coughs> it's like upgrading from a Mac Pro to a M2 Pro. Bruce does need a tech step. Um, they're the sorts of things that they're rare and expensive in the US, so they're even rarer and expensive out here. Uh, there are some things you just don't see out here, you know, like you just generally don't see up on eBay. Uh, it doesn't mean you can't buy them. I mean, a lot of stuff you can buy, you can get from the US. And if you're buying with eBay and you use the eBay shipping, uh, the, the price is pretty reasonable. So, you know, it's as long as it's something that can be shipped, uh, it's usually pretty good. Testing real-time clock. I'm happy that the real-time clock's working because that's one where I've done all sorts of stuff with it. So I've got to, I've got to ultrasonically clean it. I've got to put UV masks back on that repair that I did. Uh, I'll give, it won't need much ultrasonic because it's already been properly cleaned. This is just getting any of the flux that I put on there off. So we will only need about five minutes aside. And then I will UV mask it and then I've got to put the battery holder back on. And then of course I have to test that the battery holder is working with a battery in it and it is keeping time. And then assuming it is keeping time, this can get bundled up and sent across to the other side of the planet. Ah, uh, yeah, I think it's just looping tests. So we, have we had enough yet? Yeah, we've had enough. So let's stop, end cycle, and Apple Q. Well, uh, look, I've been going now for two and a half hours. I actually think that's probably enough for a live stream. Um, so I will probably, oh, the alarm's going off. <laughs> so shut down. Okay. Ah, oh, wow, what a, what a great day. So we got a, an LC575 sorted that was giving us the sad Mac chime and we replaced the RAM chips on it and now it's not giving us the sad Mac chime. So that's just an ultrasonic clean and we're good to go for that one. That was also a recap, but I recapped it in my last live stream. And then this, of course, is, uh, you know, now this is pretty much round three, I suppose, of, uh, of uh, repairing Javier's board. Now, I'm, it's going to go back to Joe first, I think, because I'm pretty sure Joe has the rest of the computer. So he's actually got to put it all back together again. Then he can send it to Javier. Uh, the, um, my little test of my spectacles. Um, was good. Uh, it is going to take some getting used to because I have to look through these slightly differently. Uh, part of me wishes the magnification part was a little bit lower, but you know, on the whole, they're pretty good. They're not very good all-rounders, so I think I will probably, when I'm working for the most part, I'll probably just keep using these glasses I'm wearing now because these are multifocals. Um, but I think that when I um, when I need to be able to see things up close because these ones aren't really good for seeing things up really close i will then just swap glasses out to these so that i can you know read the serial number on the bottom of uh, an apple computer how small are those things it's just, it's like it's just like reading the numbers on these chips here see i can't do them without these sorts of glasses lc three two one zero 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 j dash 10 i know the dash 10 means um uh, was it 100 100 nanoseconds or whatever it is uh, I'm back, missed about half an hour. So you managed to see the bit where we got your LC575 working though, didn't you, Max? I think that you got to, you did get to see that bit. Um, what you didn't see was we did actually repair the board again. So this has worked out really well. Today has been a good day in that both boards that I've worked on, I've got a, a, a positive outcome uh, for both of them. So feeling really good about that. Um, so as I say, this one just needs a little bit of cleaning, a little bit more UV solder mask, and uh, and then just got to test that the battery is working or the you know battery backup because all of this stuff has been replaced, all of the stuff here. So we know that the um, um, what do you call those things? Oscillator, the crystal oscillator works because the the time is it, that's working. We know the real time clock is working. Uh, but these little diodes here, these are the ones that uh, make sure that if you put the battery around the wrong way, it's protected and if you, uh, and they make sure that while the computer is running, you're not using battery power. So um, I've just got to test those and see that that's all working. Uh, 
Uh, say I'm going to watch what? Who's what? I'll only stream with proof. What? Well, well, I'll watch, and I'll tell you why. Because the next thing I'm going to do now is go back up to my new little 2023 Mac Mini, and I'm going to uh, keep getting it production ready, keep loading up software on it, and keep testing things out, and all those sorts of things. So, yeah, I'll be sitting in front of the computer, be quite happy to watch a live stream if you're offering, Steve. Steve. Um, so yeah, I deserve some wine tonight. Yeah, I deserve wine every night, but yeah, it's particularly tonight, particularly. Uh, might even put a bottle of bubbly in the fridge. How about that? Yeah, that'll be nice. Actually, you know what I do need to do now? I need to go out and buy stuff for tonight's dinner. I need to cook a meal tonight and I need to go out and buy groceries for it. So that was what I'll do first. But as soon as I come back, I'll watch Steve's stream because Steve's streaming. Is Steve streaming? Is Steve going to stream? Steve, stream Steve? Steve? Um, off to bed. Thank you, Francois, for sticking to, around to the end. I appreciate how ridiculously early or late, yeah, depending on how you look at it, it is there. So, But I do appreciate you sticking around, so thank you very much for that. And to anyone else who happens to be in Europe where I know it's going to be like 3 or 4 in the morning or something like that. 5 in the morning. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. Okay, well, I'm going to wrap it up now. Uh, thank you to everyone for watching. Thanks for keeping me company. Thanks for indulging me as I sat there and just talked for the first hour, half an hour of the live stream about the, sh the shit that's been going on in my life. And uh, so, you know, thanks for listening. Um, and um, yeah, I um, hope it all goes well in the part of the world you're in. Have a good day, night, morning, whatever. And I uh, hope to see you with the next stream. Uh, thank you to Ron for the super chat. Just a reminder about March and Tosh coming up this, next month. We've got the old uh, March and Tosh happening. So that's all that um, delicious Mar Mar Macintosh content happening in March. So check it out. Um, and yeah. Okay. I'm getting worse at finishing these things, aren't I? Uh, I used to have a really slick little banter as I left, but now I just, get, I just wander off into the distance. Thank you everyone, and I hope to see you at the next stream. Bye now. Mm -hmm.